the meantime, let's talk about how God has been working on ourselves. Have you noticed that? How with this whole big break that the whole world had, God has been working on our character and on our problems. And people have been looking more into their reaction to stress and things that have been happening that we didn't pay much attention before because we were so busy. So number one thing that I would like for all of you to keep in mind for the rest of your lives is that God is the only one that has the power to get something horrible, a horrible situation, a horrible crisis, a horrible circumstance in your life and transform that into a blessing. Have you noticed that? That through horrible experiences, traumas, horrible circumstances, God can take that person out of that horrible situation and transform into something amazing that you would only know and learn if you haven't been through that. Have you noticed that? With this whole COVID thing, people were called, God transformed a horrible situation into a blessing to us. He started working on our semblance to Jesus. We were so busy. We were waking up very early, trying to get in the bus or trying to get in the car, go through traffic, go to work. And the time is so tight. We have to do so much that we didn't have time to think about ourselves and to reflect, reflect in who we are and where we are going. So who are you? Where are you going? What is your target as a Christian? Now we have time to clearly see the condition of the world, the condition that we are in, and it's, uh, it's painful. When you start looking at self, oh, and the way we should be, that is the character of Jesus, like we need to reflect Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm so far. What can I do? So don't be dismayed because Jesus has a special way of understanding how you feel. How do you think he knows how you feel? Because he has been through everything. Put yourself in the situation that Jesus was born. So his mama wasn't married yet. She was promised. She was found pregnant. People around town saw that. And it was different. It was so different that Joseph wants to run away. But because Joseph is a man of God, he prayed and he was answered to not run away. That was how different of a situation that whole thing was. It was a miracle, but not everybody could see as a miracle. Have you gone through things like that in your life too? that you know it's a miracle, but everybody else think it's not? 
They think it's something weird and different and difficult. Nobody wants to talk about it. So after Jesus moved back to Nazareth with his family, he was, thank you, he was treated, no, he was treated different. It was so different, so different that he didn't go to the school with the other kids. He stayed home near his mama. And his job was near his papa. Because he was, oh, he's not the real son. Can you imagine that? The God of earth, the creator of the universe was treated as not the real son. So everything that you think just you go through, Jesus went through. Every situation, every blame, every shame, every sin, every problem that you know how affect you emotionally, Jesus went through. That's how he was able to understand how we feel. He understand all the temptations. He never sinned, ever, but he understand the temptations. Or do you think that the doubt wasn't put there? Are you really the son of God? The same way Satan comes to our ears and, oh, are you sure you were born of God, a child of God? And because Jesus know our nature, he knows our feelings, our human side. He has words, different words that can attract different type of people. Jesus created each one of us and he loves you. He loves the sinner. He loves people with their differences, with their uniqueness, with their thoughts. He loves so much that he died for you to be you and to be free, to have a choice. And he loves that so much. He hates the sin. Uh, he abhorred the sin, but he loves you. And he has special words to attract you. When Jesus was here and he was walking around this earth, he had special ways of healing. One of the words that he used a lot was forgiven are your sins. But we read through that and we just go through the healing part and we never really understand why did Jesus forgive before he healed. So some people are attracted to those words and they are attracted to Jesus and they are healed. For some people he used different words. He used, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be clean? Do you want change emotionally, physically, spiritually? So which word attracts you? When he was healing the people that needed to hear the word forgiven are thy sins, Why did he say that? Let's go to Where do I point? There there. <laughs> so for you to be found forgiven, it means that you are guilty, right? What is 
being guilty. Having incurred guilt, criminal, morally delinquent, wicked, chargeable with or responsible for something censurable, justly exposed to penalty, like deserve penalty, used with on, usually followed by the crime, followed by a punishment. So which words would you prefer to hear? You are a thief, you are wicked, delinquent, criminal, you are guilty. Or you would prefer to hear, forgiven are your sins. <laughs> Can you see how Jesus changed the words? Yeah, it's true. We are sinners, we are guilty, we are delinquent, we are wicked, and we are responsible. But the difference in words can make the heart soft and not hard. Some words that we say can hearten people's heart. Some words that were used on us can hearten our hearts. It goes both ways. Not just the way I treat people, but the way that I was treated too. So the way we say things can have a huge impact on people around us. Is it starting to be clear now why Jesus said forgiven? Let's keep going. What is guilt? Ah, so being guilty, you can put your finger on it and say an action has a reaction, cause, consequence. But guilt is a feeling. Can you make a, a feeling a, something concrete? It's a feeling of having committed wrong or failed in an obligation. He remembered with sudden guilt the letter from his mother. So guilt and guilty. The guilt we carry is a feeling. That feeling of guilt usually comes with shame. Guilt and shame are among the most painful human emotions. Or, you know what happens when you think that you did something and you feel awkward about it? How that feeling translates in your body with a reaction that you can concretize that? When you start feeling the shame, your skin changes temperature, changes color. And if you keep on going on those thoughts, your stomach will start hurting, your breathing will start to go faster, and your whole body will start to react to the feeling. So can you see a feeling? We can see the results of the feeling. It has consequences in us. All those emotions that we go through the day, week, months, years, it can concretize in us. It can be not just a thought and a feeling, it can be consistent. It can be, it can be what? Like concrete. Yeah, yes, like concrete. Who wants abiding reminders that we cheated on a test, failed on an exam, or disappointed a family member? It's hard to think about guilt and shame, or how guilty we feel, and how shameful we feel because of something that we did, or because something that our relatives did, and we just carry that with us. I never get these right. There. <laughs> With the shame comes 
the blame. Interesting, huh? Guilt and shame can lead to depression. Wow. Anxiety, paranoia, but they also nudge us to behave better. Huh. So it has two sides of shame. Can you see that? Let me show you. When I was little, I was at church and I was screaming. And my mom opened her purse and she had her flip flops there. <laughs> and she took me out and I went all the way out screaming. Was that shameful? Yes. Did I learn it through that shame not to do it again? Yes, I learned because it was painful. <laughs> it was painful. I learned that through that shame, I was embarrassed. My mom, oh my goodness, can you imagine? My mom was ashamed and I suffered the consequences of screaming at church. Did I do it again? No. So can you see how guilt and shame when we learn from it and it's painful, we don't want to do it again? So to point fingers and to always remind you and accuse you about what you did is whose job? So we have two, the Holy Spirit remind us of our sins so we can ask for forgiveness. But who is the accuser? Satan. Even though we ask for forgiveness already, Satan comes back and accuses us. So once the Holy Spirit remind us of all the shame, the guilt, the blame that we carry, we need to do something that we will see throughout this presentation. And can you see how Satan uses that too? To make us feel not, um, not worthy of receiving Jesus' forgiveness? When we act in a way we are not proud of, the brain broadcasts a signal that prompts us to alter our conduct. Interesting. So it's put in us already that we are not proud of doing certain things. And that it stays with us and we alter our conduct later. So over here we have a path of guilt and shame. So we have guilt, remorse, we are okay with it when we have shame and then we have toxic shame and we just keep going in this loop and we go through our lives just feeling guilty because we don't know what to do with it. Sometimes we bury somewhere and we don't even want to think about it because it's painful. All these transforms in our body with symptoms of disease. In the middle of our head, in between our eyes, we have a little box made out of bones. Inside of this box, we have a gland. And that gland sends hormones to the whole body. This gland is in charge of your body. This tiny little gland is controlled by your emotions, by what you are thinking. If your thoughts are happy, it will release serotonin that will calm you down. It's the same hormone of prayer. When you are praying, when you are saying, thank you, God, 
your body releases serotonin and your whole body suffers the consequences or likes the consequences of serotonin because it's relaxing. It makes your bones loosen up, your muscles loosen up. Now, <laughs> we don't want to loosen up bones, right? Um, now, the other way it works for toxicity to go over our body. When our thoughts are bad and of revenge and anger and we just dwell on it and go on it and we keep giving our thoughts more and more, we put more wood in the fire, physical things start to happen in our body. So I'm thinking of something. Uh, I'm going to go to the person and I'm going to say, I'm going to just say everything I want to say. And I just go on and on and on. My breathing is different. Why? Because my pituitary gland, the little tiny gland in the middle of my brain, will send message to my skin, will send hormones to my skin, and my skin will change temperature and color. That little tiny gland will send cortisol to my whole body. It will give me gastritis, because the acid, the acid is a hormone, will be filling in my stomach and it will be hurting. And then it will send to my muscles. What will happen to your muscles here when you're stressed and you're thinking about that? It tights, it gets very tight. What happens to your arteries and veins? It gets very tight, very tense. It's so tense that sometimes a person can't walk. Oh, have you thought of somebody that you read in the Bible that couldn't walk and was said your sins are forgiven? Can we start seeing now how your thoughts can affect your body to the point that you can't walk, you can have a heart attack, depending on how angry you are, your heart can stop. Say, okay, I can't handle this amount of toxin, this amount of cortisol, I, I can't handle. So the psychological symptoms are obsessive thoughts, that guilt and shame guided to this, anxiety, sadness, low self-esteem, extremely sensitive, avoiding range of emotions, wrong decisions, punishing and self-sabotaging behavior, and feeling undeserving. What are the physical symptoms? Sleeping disorders, insomnia, when you have problems, can you sleep well? No peace, fatigue and stomach related problems like indigestion. When you have trouble, the food you eat feels like rocks and they take forever to digest, just sits there and it's painful. And sometimes it's so bad that you feel like an apple is stuck in your throat or like somebody's trying to uh, change, uh, constrict your throat, that you can't breathe. All that is controlled by our thoughts. So, your thoughts are in control of you, or you are in control of your thoughts. We should be in control of our thoughts, right? Jesus gave us the freedom to choose so if our thoughts are bad, we can choose to change the thought. Our thoughts work like a radio. You can change the station. 
Can you change the station? It's, if it's playing a song that's making you angry and it's making you nervous, can you change the song? Yes, you can change it. How we do that? Huh? We'll see. Remember, guilt and shame can lead to depression, anxiety, paranoia, but they also need to behave better. Hmm. How can we do that? Body functions. What will affect the guilt? It will make us with negative emotions, will affect our cardiovascular system. Remember, we are breathing more, our heart is pumping more, and it's going faster, carrying all those toxins all over our body. Chronic illnesses, autoimmune disease, and the emotional well-being will have fear, anxiety, depression, sadness, and anger. Let's see how, how were the people in the Bible when Jesus told them what condition they were when they were told forgiven are your sins. Can you start seeing now where we are going? Matthew 9, 2 says, Just then, some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take courage, son. Your sins are forgiven. What do you think got this man to be paralytic? It was something that he did that he wasn't proud of. It could be he had a drinking problem. It could be he mistreated his kids. It could be he abandoned his house. It could be so many things. But he enclosed himself. He was a good person. You can see that he was a good person. Look at his friends. His friends brought him. They carried him. Not just that. They went up a house and put him down. That's how good he was. But something happened that he couldn't stop thinking on that problem that was so big, he didn't know what to do with it, that he couldn't walk anymore. Um, a couple of weeks ago, one of the um, moms at my kids' school, um, she said, oh, can you please help me? And she was, she is very young and uh, very beautiful. She's like on her mid-twenties. And she is very tall, very, her skin is beautiful. It's like she is healthy. Apparently, in her physical, we can't see anything wrong because when we have pain, our face goes like we have pain, right? But she looked perfect. She walked a little bit slow, but I said, what could possibly be? And she starts saying, oh, it's just, my whole body hurts. Sometimes I can't go to work. I can't get out of bed. Uh, they say that it's fibromyalgia, but you know, fibromyalgia is so controversial because there's no way that you can really prove everything now it's, we need to prove, right? So it, it's just, I, I'm sick of taking all this medicine. It just makes me groggy. I can't think, I can concentrate. It's like I'm in a cloud and I, I don't want to take those medicines anymore. So I start asking her about her eating habits, about the, how it was. It, it seems like she was really trying. She was going to the gym. She was working out. She was going to bed early. She was trying to eat healthy, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, water. And I said, huh. I'm like, well, do you have a trauma? And she's like, oh, yeah. What happened? Oh. I was molested by my uncle when I was a little girl. And I can't deal with it. 
And I said, but every time that you can't walk, that you feel so bad and in pain, how are your thoughts? And she said, oh, usually is um, when my family asks for money to take care of this uncle. And I have to give money to, to help. Can you see the thoughts, the power of the thoughts? She said, yeah, I, I send money, but you know, when everything was happening, I was telling my family, nobody believed me. It's that, that one thought. It's something horrible, it's terrible, but that one horrible thing that happened to her when she was little was translating today in her life in a way that she couldn't be a present mother to her son. She couldn't be um, a very outgoing and fast and uh, a, a person that is full of activities and go with her husband to do things with her little kid. Sometimes her husband had to go alone because she could only stay in bed. Can you see now how that paralytic man end up there? Can you see yourself when you start to have migraine or when your bones hurt, when your stomach hurts? Can you see your thoughts? Spirit of Prophecy says that 90% of our disease starts on our thoughts. Can you see that now? So, for Jesus, what was easier to say? Your sins are, are forgiven. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Forgiven were your sins, for that man had a meaning that he was struggling his whole life so bad that he couldn't walk. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. So here we have the same story told in different books. And all of them are amazing. This is tough. Many of those who came to Christ for help had brought diseases upon themselves. This is tough for me to say it and for us to hear it. I'm sure that was really hard for Sister White to write too. Because not everything applied to these, but did sin brought death to the world? Do we sin? We sin. But can you see that it's not just pointing finger here, it's also saying that because of sin, this world suffers? Can you see that there too? Not just bringing that to you, say, oh, I'm responsible for, for something that is genetic, that's not my fault. Here is a broad term. Mankind brought disease upon themselves. Can you see that there? Okay. I say that because uh, one time I was giving this presentation and a girl came up and she said, uh, uh, so I'm sick because I'm sinning? I said, no, 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 that's not what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's the broad aspect. The consequences of sin in this world is death, right? So is that clear? Okay. Yet, he did not refuse to heal them. He does not refuse to heal us, even though a lot of things happened. And when virtue from him entered into these souls, they were convicted of sin. So... Something amazing happens when the Holy Spirit tells you, remember that horrible thing that happened, that you feel so ashamed and you blame yourself so much? 
it's time to start working on it. It's time to come to Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me. Because of that feeling of shame and guilt, I've been hiding. I've been not proclaiming your word because people know me and they say, how can you come and tell me this when you did that? So this is preventing you from going out and proclaiming Christ. It's time today to solve this. It's okay to think about it, analyze it for a short period of time till you understand and comprehend. It's painful to stay in something that we did and dwell on it for too long and it can't transform into disease. But when the Holy Spirit reminds us of something bad we did, it's our opportunity to say, forgive me, Lord. And do we go back onto that? After we ask for forgiveness and Jesus forgive us and we forgive ourselves and we ask forgiveness to people around us, do we need to go back and dwell on it again? No, we don't go there anymore. We keep going because by looking, we become. We keep going looking at Jesus because that's what who we want to be. Every day, the Holy Spirit will remind you of something that you need to work on it. And if you keep following the same loop of going through the same thing over and over, it's because you didn't pass the, the test yet. And you see yourself in the same situation till you learn. And most of the time is how to deal, how to react to things. It's up to us how we will react. If somebody starts yelling and screaming at us, do we yell and scream back? <laughs> no, how we will react. Um, my dad, he worked for the government and uh, sometimes people would come with uh, plans for him to approve and he was like, this is not right, you know, because it's the government, you think you can do anything, nobody will pay attention to what we are doing here. No, 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 I'm not gonna prove that. So they would come to his office and uh, be really rude. You are asking for something and you are rude. It doesn't make much sense, right? So he, he said, I, 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 I have a technique now to deal with this kind of people. So he, he, he said that he would just sit there and he would put his glasses like all the way down here. And he would be looking at them like this. Uh-huh. 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 And he wouldn't say anything else, just uh-huh. And the person would be screaming, pulling hairs. And, and then it just something would happen there. He was praying, of course. Um, the, the person would just go like, uh, and he storm out. <laughs> he didn't have to say a word, just... Uh-huh, uh-huh. It worked for him. So how would be your reaction? What, what would you do? So we have the old man and the new man, right? How would your old self react to things like this? And how your new self would react to things like this? So the Holy Spirit grabs us show us, convince us of our sins. We have the opportunity of ask for forgiveness. And then something amazing start working. Look at this. And many were healed of their spiritual disease as well as their physical maladies. Among these were the paralytic at Capernaum, like the leper, this paralytic had lost all hope of recovery. 
His disease was the result of a sinful life, and his sufferings were embittered by remorse. Huh. In vain, he had appealed to the Pharisees and doctors for relief. They pronounced him incurable. They denounced him as a sinner and declared that he would die under the wrath of God. He just wanted a word of encouragement. Are we, which part do we play here? How are we treating others, members of our family, or even ourselves? When we are begging for help, or when somebody's begging for help, how are we reacting? So we have guilt, the feeling of being guilty and in shame. And we have remorse. What is remorse? In Latin, remorse, mordere, means to bite. So the re word, it means that we'll do it again. So rebite, <laughs> bite and rebite, and ruminate. Remorse is something that, how you say that word? Nos at you over and over. In criminal court, judges are always looking for signs of remorse in somebody to see if they at least feel sorry for what they did. And Psalms says that a person that is sad and contracted and uh, um, it's always thinking about, you know, just bad things, a, a sad, a sad face that dries the bones. Can you see how that happens for real? It's real. Can your thoughts corrode your body? Yes. Before Jesus came was St. John the Baptist. His word was repent. For the whole time that he was, before Jesus started, he was calling people to repent, to remember the sins. Lord, help me to remember. So the next step is to go to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. Can you see that this is the course that the Holy Spirit uses to bring us to Jesus? Satan's job is to accuse. Even that you ask for forgiveness already, he will come back and accuse and point and laugh. Should you go back there again? No, just keep going. So those are the paths for forgiveness and apology. I remember that uh, my dad, he, he, uh, he was always losing his patience, like always. He would just speak so fast and he was so mad and so angry that saliva would come out of his mouth. Like he would like, be like Arabia's dog. And then after all that, he would go, oh, okay, I'm done. And then at the end of the day, he would say, I did wrong. Can you forgive me? <laughs> he stayed with that in his mind and he worked on it and said, I think I did something wrong. And he would come back and say, forgive me. Being um, Hispanic, I'm from Brazil. We are raised in a very different way. The words that our parents tell, tell us, it, 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 it's rough. <laughs> like, 
when we get home, you're not gonna have any teeth in your mouth. <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's horrible. And you, you grow to not even care for those words because you know, they, they are just barking. They're just barking words. Uh, sometimes it did happen, but um, <laughs> it, it's just, just words. And here in the United States, it, it's a little bit different. It's um, more of um, an emotional feeling. Good job. Keep going. And for me to see that difference was very interesting. I'm like, huh, I need to learn how to take care of emotionally too, because Hispanic parents, and I learned that with easy that Asian parents do the same, right? Um, we really take care of the physical. If the kid has clothes and food and a roof over the head, should not open the mouth to complain about anything. <laughs> but there is no emotional care. And that bring us as people and our culture to problems with ourselves that we need to work on it because my words to my kids when they were little, it were just like the words I heard. <laughs> my son is like. <laughs> so once I start learning that, I said, oh, wow, I need to start asking for forgiveness. You know, I traumatized them in some ways the way I was traumatized, and that cycle would keep going. And if I would never go back and say, forgive me, that's how they will go about their lives when they have kids. Can you see that? That the generation through another generation, how the cycle, the abuse, the trauma, it just repeats because we don't know any better. But once we ask for forgiveness, we see our problems, we see our need of Christ, we ask for forgiveness, a new person is born. This is science proving the new birth of a person. Can Science explain how a murderer will be somebody that will open the Bible and start preaching. We couldn't explain, but now we can. So yes, God uses the science too for the unbelievers to say like, like uh, the one that wanted to touch Jesus' scars. They needed proof. The proof is there. A new person can be born. An apology and forgiveness can happen. If you were abused or you were the abuser, you can ask for your ways to be changed. You can offer an apology and forgiveness, or the other way around too. When Jesus was healing, that's how he heals us, and he heals our emotions and our character. A marvelous change had come over the demoniacs. Remember that um, the, a lot of men were coming when Jesus was getting out of the boat from the storm. The disciples were a little bit back. Some disciples says two demoniacs. Some disciples says one. Some say that were more than two because they were fighting in the back who would sit or who would be um, the better one at his kingdom. Remember that? So Jesus was walking. And the demoniacs were coming, and they were scary. They were so scary that they would chain themselves. They chained themselves. So 
Jesus healed them and light shone into their minds. When we ask forgiveness to Jesus and he forgives us, this happens. Our eyes are beamed with intelligence because God tells you, come and reason with me. He doesn't say, I will force you. I will push you. You will make it. No. If something is trying to force you, it's not from God. Not from God. He, he will never push. He will never force. He will never say, if you don't do that, that will happen to you because of, no reason you become intelligent the countenance is so long deformed into the image of satan remember by looking we become all of a sudden they become mild the blood-stained hands were quiet, and with glad voices, the men praised God for their deliverance. Now, these men were clothed and in their right mind. They received clothes from who? From Jesus. When we ask forgiveness and he transformed us emotionally, physically, spiritually, he puts his clothes on us. Listening to his words, glorifying the name of him who had made them whole. But the people who beheld this wonderful scene did not rejoice. They were mad because they lost money. Oh, we are very nice people and all, you know, but if touch my money, we are not nice anymore, right? That's what happened to them. Their pockets were affected. They did not want Jesus there anymore. They were not a Jewish nation. You know what was happening? So to invest your money in swines and pork was very profitable for all the religions around. They were eating it. They were take, making candles with the fat. They were cooking. They, were, they used everything from the pork, and that was a lot of money. So, some of the Jewish leaders were paying those people to take care of their pork because they were Jewish, they could not have pork in their house or in their land. Do we have money invested? Is our invested money going to cigarettes and beer and Pork and can you see what happened there? Why they were so angry? These Jewish men come here and kill all these swine that belong to his own people there. Can you see why he was not welcome there anymore? And when he went back to his land, his own land, he was not received anymore. Wow. Do you think Satan just asks you to go to the pork just because whatever? Huh. He knew touching the pockets of the Jewish leaders would make them angry. And they want to destroy Jesus. This is deep. When we look at Jesus more than we look at ourselves, something is start to happen. We recognize how sinful we are. We recognize our need of being better because can we transform our stripes? But he can. Remember when um, Jacob had his flock and God told him, put um, some polka dot, uh, different kind of uh, 
um, leather there, that all the, the, the sheep that will be looking at that when they come to drink water, they will be transformed and their, their kids will be born with those spots. They were looking while drinking water. Oh my goodness, so, so many meanings right there. Who are the sheep? We are. By looking, do we become or not? So we need, have that need of Christ. And he guides us to repentance. Can we repent on our own? And then he brings us to confession. After that, he starts your consecration. It's like every day he will bring you something or two or three or four things for you to work on it. Because you need to be just like him. And then faith. And then acceptance. Do we accept others and love others? They're just people, just like us. They are learning just like us. They might be in different steps in certain things that you are. But can you accept and love the person? Not the sin, but can you love the person? Can you accept yourself? That's a hard one. Can you accept yourself and forgive yourself? And say, ah, I was so wrong. It's a relief when we see Jesus transforming us and accepting us. And then we are tested. <laughs> Okay, let's see if you change your attitude towards somebody being really mean to you. And we start growing in Christ. Because when we see our problems, it's painful to go through. Very cold. And make an analysis of your actions. Uh, one time a little girl said to me, um, Oh, those kids are so mean to me. And I said, well, can you analyze the situation and, and try to see maybe you are doing something? Oh, you just changed the thing and make my fault. No, 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 no. Just, just analyze what, what, what are you doing? Are you doing something? If you are not, that's fine. But if you are, can you correct it? It, it, it's hard to do this. It's painful. And um, when I was reading the book um, about raising children by Ellen White, what, uh, what's the name of the book? Oh, it is a great book, but <laughs> it's... It, it is tough because I said, I'm not doing this. Oh, I didn't do this. Oh, I didn't do this either. Oh, I'm doomed. <laughs> it's like somebody is touching our scar and ripping apart. So growing Christ. It's painful, but if your eyes are in Jesus, you're just going to go through. Because you will stop to pay attention to what's going around you, and you have tunnel vision. That's where I want to go. That's who I need to look to become like, and I'm not going to pay attention to anything else. And then you don't feel that pain. You just go through. And then you keep on praying. And you are able to rejoice in the Lord. Every time we rejoice. And we say thank you. We release serotonin in our body. You can be angry all you want. But the minute you say a prayer. 
Oh, thank you, God, for this beautiful day. It changes. Your breathing change. And then the next day, everything happens again. <laughs> the Lord will bring you to Christ, show you your sin. You will recognize it, not dwell on it. You will confess, you, you repent, you confess, you consecrate yourself because the words are not done yet. When Jesus said, forgiven are your sins, what he did say later? Go and sin no more. <laughs> yeah, it's forgiven. But you need change your habit. You need change that little thing that keep you coming and falling in the same error. So when Jesus is trying to change us, it's not just that sin. He's trying to change the habit that came with the sin. And he will keep on working on you. And every day, those are our steps. Do you recognize those steps? Yeah? Where, 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 do you, where have you seen those? Steps step through Christ. Isn't that amazing? A, a little booklet that you can read in um, an hour and a half, two hours. And every time you read, it has a new meaning. <laughs> and it works on something different. Those are just the chapters. <laughs> and it just keeps going. And a new person is being born every day and growing in Christ to become just like Christ. When the Holy Spirit remembers you of your sin and you ask for forgiveness, you go through the whole cycle and then Satan comes and accuses you, this verse is what will help you. But one thing I do, forgetting, I ask forgiveness already, Forget, forgetting those things which are behind. It's gone. Should I go back and think about it again? I need to go forward to those things which are ahead. Where do I want to go? Who do I want to become? I want to live with Jesus. You want to live with Jesus. We need to like the same things he likes, or it will be unbearable. I press toward the goal for the prize of the poured call of God in Christ Jesus. Wow, doesn't that have a whole new meaning for you? And Apostle Paul had a horrible sin that he had a Pine in the flesh because of that sin. Do you think Satan was always trying to remind him of that? To push him back? Not to spread the word? Can you imagine how many times that was brought up to his thought? It was so bad that he said, okay, I'm going to run like the people run in a marathon. I will train myself to run from sin, to run from my past. Just keep going to Jesus. And he kept going. And this is not going. That's the last one? Okay. So, when you start following that cycle, and you don't know what to do, remember that Jesus loves you. Jesus forgave you. 
He's teaching you to go and sin no more in that thing. And he's giving you the opportunity to let him use you. Because when he blesses you with a change, with a new person, his math, we can't understand. Because that one person that God changed will be able to be a living sacrifice, a living um, experience, a living um, proof power of who Jesus is. And people around you start to receive the blessing that he made happen in your life. So can you see when one person in your church has the prayer answered? How many of you get touched by that? And the blessing that you receive from that too? Because that gives you strength. Isn't that amazing? How many times... I say here when somebody else did something different and how God transformed them, how that can help you to learn from experiences. So the Lord is calling you today to repent, to ask forgiveness for your sins and giving you the opportunity of being a new person and be just like him. Let's pray. Dear God, our Father, our Lord, we are so thankful to you, Lord, because you love us so much. We don't deserve, Lord, but you created us and you love us so much that we can't even understand. Lord, help us to grab to Jesus' hand and to ask for forgiveness and ask for forgiveness of people around us too that we have been sinned against. Help us, Lord, to pour our hearts in your presence and to become just like you. Help this church, Lord, to feel the need of you and uh, to do the necessary transformations that they have to do, little habits that they need to get better. We all know, Lord, where we are having our little, little problems and, and troubles. And you know, Lord, we ask you that you heal us and prepare us to live with you. In Jesus' name we pray.